If, you know, if you're paying $100,000 for a banana, it'll probably taste pretty good. Art is intentionally, I think art is anything intentionally done as art. Webster's defined art as something that is created with imagination and skill that is beautiful or that expresses ideas or feelings and plans. This is Ben from Toronto Creatives. And we're talking about art today. Okay, so. I can't honestly talk to you about art all that much. The fact is that art is an incredibly subjective thing. I've got my head up for this whole thing. You can see art in sculptures, you can see art in paintings. I think it means different things to different people. But realistically, my well, my definition of art would be, would be anything created with the intention of creating art. As long as you scream art, you throw a fish at a stranger, run off. I mean, that's technically art, I guess, under that definition. It's always better to get another perspective on these kind of things. So I took some time and visited an artist friend of mine, Jonathan Ball. He lives in the West End of Toronto. He's an amazing fine artist and street artist. I followed him around, asked him some questions, and made him give me some free coffee. You know, it's funny, like, I, uh, I think I, I always knew, but I didn't always know what being an artist was. And I think when I was younger, and I figured out that this is a profession that some people have, it was like, that's what I'm gonna do. So my name is Jonathan Ball. I'm an artist that lives and works in Toronto. The definition of art is it has to be an object that has no other function than being it, it being itself. So like, you know, if you can use an object for something other than just like decorating a wall or just sitting there, then technically it shouldn't be considered art. Is a banana tape to the wall art? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. If you eat the banana, then technically it's not art. But if you leave the banana on the wall, then it's art. Street, street art's awesome. I absolutely love street art. Um, I'm involved, I do a lot of work with uh, Start Toronto, which is like Toronto's street art initiative. And they help people um, with paint, supplies, getting walls to paint on. Um, and they're like, they're very nurturing and good like that. A lot of the walls that I've done in the city legally have been through them. I think there's like about four or five that are still up. Um, and then there's a couple more that are in the pipelines. And uh, there's probably about this, like there's probably about five that have been painted over. I grew up just uh, outside of Toronto in a, a town called Woodbridge. And I left Woodbridge about like, um, I don't know, maybe like 15 years ago now. But that's sort of like where I spent most of my time growing up. I think my life is in Toronto now, so, you know. And like, you know, Woodbridge is like pretty close to Toronto too, so I have like family there. I mean, I have like a studio here, I work here, the galleries here that uh, I sell out of. So I'm currently represented by Liss Gallery, which is in Yorkville. And uh, we, just did, uh, we just did Art Miami and we did Art New York this year. Labels, labels, I think labels like kind of like push you into like a certain like box and I don't really like boxes. Like I'm a painter, I'm a photographer, like illustrator, graffiti artist, muralist, but I don't like all of like all of those is like one thing, which is an artist. I like to take a lot of scenes from movies and sort of like Star Wars, that's where that's where a lot of the Star Wars, that, that body of work came from. I was working with Westerns at the time and I was taking still frames from like The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Um, there was a really great piece that I did. It was like one, I did it so long, it was almost like 10 years ago. It was uh, a scene from The Wild One, which is with Marlon Brando. And it's with, it's like the scene in the movie where like the townspeople are just like sort of beating him down and he's like defeated. And it's this really pivotal point in the movie and I just like took that still frame and I turned it into a painting, but I turned it into like a really messy painting. So it's very like, it's very painterly, it's really expressionistic and you have to like kind of step back from it to like see the scene. And I love that look. I love like when you like go, when you, when you, when you first see the painting, you're not really sure what it is. And then you step back and you kind of, it gives you like that gratification of like, oh, this is a, this isn't like, this is a shape or this is something that I recognize. Star Wars, of course, for me, like it was something that I was always interested in as a, as a kid growing up. 
we never, I never had the original tr trilogy when I was like younger at home. It was something that like, I think a cousin had. And whenever we would go over, it was something that I had to, I had to see because it was, it was so foreign and it was so cool and it was so interesting. And uh, it was just like new idea. I was like such a huge science fiction nerd, Star Trek, Star Wars, you know, I loved all that stuff. Very inspirational growing up to think of the future and to think of like what technology would be. And of course I grew up without the internet. So the internet was invented like probably when I was about maybe like 15. It's a huge shift I think everyone who grew up in that era to like to now it's like having the internet and being able to communicate in a second with someone all the way around the world. Like those things were all like complete novelties growing up. So a lot of my paintings are about Star Wars or have been about Star Wars. And I did a show uh, that was just, it was called Empire and it was just all about the Star Wars franchise before it was purchased by Disney. I basically took all the different shapes and uh, imagery from the movie and I kind of just tried to turn them into abstract expressionist paintings. So like paintings similar to like something that Jackson Pollock or Rio Pell would do and uh, just used outlines of the ships and like, you know, a couple different characters and stuff like that to try to see, to try to like, I don't know, tease out meaning from those shapes and from the franchise. Biology definitely influences my style and it's uh, it's something that I like to throw into my work. I don't know if my work is, is like based, if it's, I don't know if it's about biology by itself, but it's something that I like to influence my work. So I like to, I'll have a lot of, you know, cowboys or, you know, characters with like their chests exposed and, you know, you'll be able to see like their heart and their rib cage. Human biology, anatomy, nature, like those are really fascinating because these are like forms that have basically just evolved on their own. I can't not put that in my art. I can't like not have that somehow influence me, you know? You know, it's funny, like, I have a couple sketches and like watercolors that I do that are very soft and like very feminine. But like when I start working with paint, I can't, it's just, it's just hard. It's a harder line. It's like a little bit more haphazard. It's a lot more like in the moment. When you try to curb the way you paint, it becomes more about illustration than it does about painting. And I think painting is always really about the feeling and the emotion that goes into the piece and like how that's reflected to the viewer. Yeah. Cool. Sound good? I think that's pretty good.